What's good beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to talk to you about how I get to travel as much as I do. So the very first time I ever traveled internationally was when I was 19 years old in college and I went on a study abroad trip to Spain and Morocco. Between what was that 1999 and 2013 I was able to travel to five countries in total. So as you might guess, it was very, very sporadic in terms of how frequently I was able to go abroad. All right. So in 2013, I decided to take a career break from freelance writing. I was freelance writing, working part-time as a um, news reporter, uh, what else was I doing? Teaching, hip hop, dance, and yoga. And I was loving my life, but at the time, the money, the contracts just weren't coming in as frequently as they were. And then I learned about the opportunity to teach English in South Korea. And I took it after doing a lot of research and contemplating if this was something that I really wanted to do. So my personal experience of being in Korea, the salary is not that high. It's not high compared to an American salary, but the difference is it is considered disposable income because so much is covered in your contract. So housing is taken care of. You don't have a car or car insurance, car notes, things like that. The utility bills that you pay are pretty low compared to back home. Even healthcare was really low. In other countries, in other Asian countries, I think it's uh, pretty comparable in terms of um, those same things. It's not exact, but I'm speaking from my perspective and working for um, EPIC, which is English program in Korea. It's a government program managed by South Korea. So that was how I was able to travel as much as I did. In those three years that I was taught English in South Korea, I traveled to about 15 to 20 countries, something like that. <clears throat> so I would travel as much as I could throughout Korea, but also throughout East and Southeast Asia and it i had a blast i had a blast so unless you have a lot of bills or have a lot of responsibility that you have to take care of back home and that's what a lot of people did they paid off debt um or not because they traveled so much but you get that disposable income and then you get to do it with it whatever you whatever you choose to let's fast forward to where i am today right now and that is in medellin colombia in south america so right now, I'm still teaching English, but instead of doing it in the classroom, I'm doing it online. I've been doing it for like a month and a half, and it's been working out great. I like teaching. I like working with the kids. I enjoy doing the classes, and it's really easy. So I work about one to two hours a day. I work about one to two hours a day by choice. You could definitely work more hours if you want to, but last month I worked my first full month and that was about 42 hours. So this is without me doing any of like the hard marketing or other things that a lot of teachers do to gain a lot of students. Uh, because how it works is once you're hired, you make a profile, you make a quick intro video, uh, student uh, parents, because the parents are the ones who chooses you, parents see that uh, and then if they're interested in, in your style and your fav flavor, they select you. And based on the schedule that you create for yourself, the hours that you are willing to work, the time slots that you choose, they select those available hours if, they're, if that's when their ch children are available. And then that's how your schedule gets set up. So starting out the gate, you're not going to have a full schedule. So that's something to keep in mind. You have to build what I call your clientele. And for me, I've been going really slow because before coming here, I was working in Saudi Arabia for about four months. And I was in a city where there was absolutely nothing to do, absolutely no social life. So I was basically banking all of those checks. And I knew that I wouldn't be there for long. I had this plan to go to Colombia. And so let's uh, take a little tangent and talk about the cost of living in Colombia really quickly. The cost of living in Colombia is 
fairly cheap compared to living in America. So when I was offered the position to teach here, I was offered a monthly salary of $400 a month. Yes, 400 USD a month, which is not a lot at all, but actually in Colombia, it's considered a good salary. And I think it's about the average salary here, but that's considered a good average salary. And even once getting here and applying to some writing jobs that I ended up not going with because I felt like it wasn't, it just wasn't worth it for me right now. I'm kind of enjoying all this free time that I have, <laughs> you know, trying to milk that as much as possible. Um, but even with applying to some to U.S. companies who are stationed here, the range that they offered for a writing position was between $700 a month and $1,000 a month. So again, not a lot, but compared to the Colombian salaries here, it's you're doing pretty good. So my point is, if you're living in a country where the cost of living isn't high, working online would be perfect for you. Working online would be perfect for you because like I said, I work about one to two hours a day right now on a light schedule, on a light part-time schedule. And so last month, my first full month of working, I worked 42 hours, 42 hours for the entire month. And my paycheck will be about... 395 so 395 usd now you have the potential to do much much more than i'm doing eventually my goal while here is to get to like 100 hours a month but again i'm taking that really slowly there's no rush for me uh, however the friend who introduced me to the company told me that there are some teachers who made like seventy-five thousand dollars in a year working with the company and the company that i work for is vip kid vip kid so it's really up to you you get to make your schedule you get to put in the effort and the work of how much money you want to make and how many hours you want to do now one thing to consider is that you're teaching children in china you're teaching children in beijing there is a time difference depending on where you live and that could affect that could affect the hours that you work because the peak hours that they want you to, to, to work for are, I believe it's either 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Beijing time, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, it's like a 12 hour slot from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. For me, my schedule on, and in Colombia right now, we have uh, Eastern Standard Time uh, because they don't do the daylight savings thing but my hours now are like 6 a.m to 9 a.m yeah and i usually get like one i'm working one to two hours per day so yeah that's my spiel that's how i'm able to travel the way i do and i've been able to travel the way i do so right now it's working out perfectly for me because i and i knew i was coming here i saved for a good three months of living here so i'm good for three months and now i'm building up as i'm building up my clientele with vip kids you know i'll be set once those three months runs out so i think i've answered all of the questions in terms of how do I get to travel as much as I do. Uh, when you work teaching English as a second language abroad, people usually tend to travel quite a bit. It just depends on where you are working and how much money you're making. So like in Europe, for example, Spain, people tend to break even, but then there are other ways you can make either make extra money or you can budget yourself so that you're not, you're not breaking. But in Asia, they tend to pay more in terms of teaching English. So if you are good with children, if you like teaching, you like working with people, and you have patience and high energy, teaching abroad might be something that you could consider, or teaching online could be something that you could consider. However, I will make a public announcement and say, don't do it just to be able to travel, because A, you'll hate it, you'll hate doing the, the work, and B, Keep in mind that these are real people that you're affecting, whose lives you're affecting and that you're interacting with. And these are people's children and babies <laughs> that you're coming in contact with. So if it's not something that you really like, don't do it just to be able to travel.
there are more ways that you can work and travel and maybe I'll do a video on that as well. And I'll also do another video on VIP Kid specifically where I get into the details of the application process and what it takes to be a VIP Kid teacher. But for now, I just wanted to answer the question, how do I get to travel the way I do? Um, teaching abroad has definitely upped my game. <laughs> it has definitely upped, upgraded my travel game. Because yeah, before that, for like what, almost 10 years or so, it was just real sporadic. Only five countries within 10 years. Flip that, like 15 countries in three years. So it's crazy. Um, but I will leave the my referral link for a VIP kit down in the description box below. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in teaching online. And uh, it'll give you a lot of information on what VIP kit is about. Also, if you decide to go with VIP kit, please use my referral link. Uh, it lets them know that I referred you and I also get like a small incentive. Honestly, it's not a lot, but it's something, right? So I hope that answered all of your questions. Um, if you want to continue the conversation, leave your comments in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to respond individually or maybe make another video if I get a lot of the same questions. All right? Deuces.